welcome to Lilybug's Library. My name is Linda. So we are going to talk about wedding cozies today and boy there are a lot of them. Um, I think it's almost exclusively cozies. I might have thrown a romance or two in there but um, only if it really caught my eye. So we'll talk about those today. So before I get there um, I'm gonna have a little rant. So, <laughs> so if you don't want to hear my rant just move ahead to when you see the book come up. Okay. So here's my rant for today. I get all these newsletters from um, authors and things that I've signed up for. You know, if they had a free book, you sign up for the newsletter, you get the free book. So all great, but sometimes when you go to unsubscribe, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be an author, it could be anything. You go to unsubscribe and the newsletter is so long that there's no unsubscribe thing. You have to actually click to, you know, go ahead and then you go on the internet and then you have to unsubscribe from there. It drives me a little crazy, just a little pet peeve of mine. It's like I, you know, put it at the top of the newsletter if it's going to be too long, you know, put it someplace you can find it because it's a lot. And then now, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but every time you unsubscribe to anything, it'll come up with something and say, well, why did you unsubscribe? And then there's like five or six things you can choose from. It's like, uh, none of your business doesn't seem to be <laughs> on the list. Or, you know, I mean, uh, I get too many emails, you know, I mean, it's not that I have anything against any of the newsletters, uh, you know, most of them are great. But I also don't have, uh, it's not even that I don't have the time in my life, but I don't want to spend the time in my life reading a million newsletters. So, you know, a lot of times I just, I'll get the free book, I'll stick around for a little while to see if it's something I really connect with, and then I will get rid of that newsletter. I'm still reading the person's books. I'm still reviewing them. I just don't want a newsletter every time I turn around. So usually when it comes up and asks why, I just click off of that and ignore it. But again, it's just these little pet peeves that that start to irritate you. <laughs> Could have something to do with my medication being changed. Maybe I'm just more irritable these days, but uh, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's still a pet peeve. And uh, my other pet peeve is uh, more personal. Um, it's, you know, stepped on the scale this morning. Didn't like the number. I mean, I never liked the number, but you know, really didn't like the number. And so I just have, why is it that every medication seems to include weight gain? You know, even when they, you know, it just, it's, it's constant, right? Like all of the medications, they, you know, they almost always include some kind of weight gain and then they want to put you on a different medication to get rid of the weight gain or, you know, they put you on some kind of hormonal thing and then that, you know, makes everything worse because then there's more weight gain. And it's like, uh -huh. <laughs> so Anyway, yeah, just having a little pity party this morning. What can I say? So let's get on with the books. Um, we'll, you know, that'll, that'll make me happy, right? Books always make me happy. So the first one um, is actually a paranormal, and it's called Marriage Spells Murder. And so, excuse me if I look down at my notes a little bit. Um, so it talks about uh, Skylar um, Blackwood. So she hasn't used magic since high school. She apparently you know, cast it on someone that she was in love with and then she ended up ruining her marriage and, you know, didn't go well. So she's kind of away from all that. And so now she's living in this little sleepy seaside town uh, with her friend Herb, um, who apparently is just performing the fake kind of magic for, you know, the locals. So that's all well and good, but then uh, Skylar's uh, life is turned upside down when a grumpy groom drops dead at the altar and her friend Herb actually gets accused of murdering him. So, uh, you know, she decides she's going to, you know, look into this and try to get her friend off, but then to make it even worse, um, her uh, ex-husband, who she, it says she might still be a teeny bit in love with, uh, turns up to be the um, lead detective on the case. So lots of drama that's going to happen there, I'm sure. So that one sounds like it should be interesting. Uh, the next one, I absolutely love the, the different um, uh, colors and the flowers in it. Uh, it's called Bloom and Doom. And this one is uh, part of the Bridal Bouquet Shop Mysteries. 
And so it's about um, Audrey Bloom, and she makes these uh, terrific flowers for wedding bouquets and things. And she uh, bases a lot of them on the Victorian meaning of the flowers. So that would be kind of interesting. Uh, so then her childhood friend, Jenny, um, comes in and wants, uh, she's just getting ready to get married to like the most eligible bachelor in town. And she wants Audrey to do her wedding bouquet. So she picks a bunch of flowers that Audrey thinks like, eh, they don't really go together, but it's your day, do what you want. And that's all fine. But then the groom is found dead, sprinkled with bits of the bouquet. So now she has to worry about trying to get her friend um, you know, to keep her from going to jail because it looks as though she's the one that did it. So that one too sounds really good. I find a lot of the, um, a lot of the wedding mysteries, not all, but you know, a good portion of them seem to have, uh, the wedding planner, um, is the, the detective or the sleuth, um, not like the groom or the bride or whatever. So anyway, it's kind of interesting, but, um, uh, you know, just like culinary mysteries, it's like there has to be some sort of little twist to it. Uh, so the next one is um, the Wedding Planner Mystery Series uh, by Stephanie Blackmore, and it's called Engaged in Death. And so with this one, um, Mallory is, she's dumped her uh, cheating ex fiance cheating fiance and canceled the wedding. And she inherits um, an old rundown mansion um, so she decides to go there and kind of, you know, deal with all of that and get away from, you know, the disaster that was the wedding. And so apparently she gets there, this place is falling down, there's stray cats, there's peeling wallpaper, there's nosy neighbors, you know, she's dealing with all of that. And so she's thinking she'll fix it up and then sell it off. Um, but unfortunately, there's an unexpected visitor that's found dead on her front lawn. So she has to deal with that first. <laughs> so that sounds, uh, sounds interesting, a little quirky. Uh, so that one should be good. And then there is um, To Have and To Kill by Mary Jane Clark. Uh, this one, um, I'm not as crazy about the, the cover. Um, I know it's a wedding cake and I have a feeling maybe the cover would look better uh, in physical form. But when I look at it, like, um, you know, just on Goodreads or, you know, on the, the internet at all, it's, um, uh, it's a little too dull for me. I'd like something a little, um, brighter, I guess. That's just a personal opinion. Uh, so this one's about Piper. Uh, she's an actress and she's having a hard time. So of course, you know where they go, where they, ha when they have a hard time, back to mom's, right? Back to their parents' place. So she goes to help out in their bakery and she has a friend there who, her name is Glenna. Glenna? Yeah, Glenna. And so she's getting married and she wants Piper to prepare the wedding cake for her. So Piper says, okay, but then somebody is murdered and her friend is the prime suspect. Now it doesn't say who is murdered, so I don't know if it's the groom or someone else entirely, but that sounds like it, uh, not the way you want to start a wedding. All right. And the next one, the next one's a little different and I'm kind of excited about it. Um, so this one is called Destination Wedding Mystery Series and it's by Marla, Marla Cooper. And the first book is called Terror, ter I can't say that word well, Terror in uh, Taffeta. So Terror in Taffeta. Uh, so this one is about um, the wedding planner, Kelsey McKenna, and the destination wedding that she's doing is in a Mexican town called San Miguel de Allenda. And the reception is all set to go on. So she has the tequila donkey ready to go, which I think is adorable. And, and the bride and groom are standing on the altar getting ready to, you know, say their vows. And just as the priest is about to pronounce them husband and wife, one of the bridesmaids falls into the floral arrangement. So the mother of the bride um, apparently is running the show here. So I don't know how she manages to keep the bride and groom from finding out that the bridesmaid is not good. Uh, but she does. She swears everyone else to secrecy and, you know, figures there's no way she's, you know, paid for this wedding. She's going ahead with it. So that's fine. Uh, but then someone else actually, um, the bride's sister is arrested for murder. And I feel like there was another, I think there was another, I thought there was another, um, murder here. Uh, maybe it was only the one. 
Yeah, I think it was only the one. But anyway, so yeah, that's um, the bride's sister's arrested. She's trying to, you know, the mother-in-law is trying to go on with everything or the mother is trying to go on with everything. So I really like the idea of it being a destination wedding. I think that's kind of neat. I haven't looked at the other ones that she's done, um, whether they're... Uh, I don't think they'd all be in Mexico. I assume they'd all be in a different place. So I'd kind of like to see where each one is from, uh, what each destination is. Because, yeah, I think that would be interesting. Um, she must have done a lot of research for that because I'm sure planning any kind of a destination wedding anywhere. Um, I've been to a couple and, and they certainly don't. Um, there's a lot of pieces to it, you know, to, for it to go smoothly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested to read that one and see kind of where it goes. And how much it really gets into the fact that it's a destination wedding or whether that's just a, kind of a, an aside, right? Uh, so the next one, uh, love the cover on this one. This one's Better Off Wed by Laura Durham. And this one, uh, I was looking to see, oh gosh, um, Annabelle Archer Mystery Series is what this one's called. So uh, she, again, is the wedding planner. And so she's really having problems with this difficult mother of the bride and uh, so she, who is it that dies in this one? Da, da, da. Yeah, so it says that it's um, a slain matron was perhaps the most hated socialite in DC. So I can't tell from the way they describe it whether that is the mother of the bride that ends up getting killed or maybe one of the guests. It doesn't really, you know, kind of say that. Um, but anyway, um, so she is trying to figure out what's going on and the suspicion for the murder falls on her friend and sometimes business partner, Richard. And so she's trying to um, get him cleared of this murder and hopefully have everything else go smoothly. Uh, so that one sounds interesting as well. Uh, so the next one is Engaged in Murder. And this one is by Nancy Para, who apparently is also Nancy Coco. Um, so I think I've read some of her books as Nancy Coco, although I can't off the top of my head tell you which ones. But, uh, but I've certainly heard that name, but not Nancy Para. Um, and it is too tiny for me to tell what the name of the series was. I'm trying to find it here, but yeah, it's not there. So <laughs> when I put the cover up, I'm sure you'll be able to see it. Okay, so again, it's an event planner, a wedding planner. Uh, her name is Pepper Pomeroy, and she is trying to arrange a surprise for her sister Felicity. So this one's a little different. So she, because she's an event planner and not specifically a wedding planner, uh, Felicity's boyfriend has hired her to be able to propose to Felicity. So... She's done all these things to make it happen. Uh, she, you know, helped get into get a private jet and all the fine details to to have this perfect proposal. So, you know, that's great. She's got everything on the go for it, and everything's going smoothly. And the um, guy that hired her said, "Oh, you really should do, you know, this sort of thing as you know part of your business." And so she's really thinking about, you know, starting this up as a business, specifically doing, you know, like proposals and things. But before she can actually, you know, really get her head wrapped around this, she finds out there's a dead guy in the ladies' room of the jet hangar. And so now she's really concerned that, you know, they're going to have a criminal in the family and that maybe the guy who's proposing to her sister is, is not such a good guy. So she's a little concerned about that. So that one... Sounds like, uh, I don't know, it's got a, a little twist to it with them doing the proposal as opposed to the wedding. So I kind of like the, the idea of that as well. Uh, so the next one really goes off the rails when it comes to um, how they're doing the whole wedding thing. So this one is called a catered cat wedding. And love cats, but uh, not sure about the wedding part. Uh, but this one is part of the Mystery with Recipes mystery series. Uh, so, yeah, that could be good. I mean, I'd, you know, I'm not sure whether they'd give you recipes for things that you would, uh, like, meals or appetizers at a wedding or actual wedding cake. But anyway, sounds interesting. Or maybe since it's a cat wedding, 
Maybe they're giving you recipes for cat treats. I don't know. Uh, so this one um, is about Susie Katz, and uh, she's known as the crazy cat lady of this place in New York where she lives. And she goes out of her way to earn that title. She's got cat t-shirts. She's got Hello Kitty dolls everywhere. She's, she's a fanatic. And she really loves anything to do with cats. She's not so crazy about humans. So she decides to put up a tent on her property and have this elaborate wedding for her two Russian blue cats. And she's kind of doing it just to tick people off that she doesn't like. So she invites all her favorite enemies. So she invites her bird loving neighbor, a rival cat breeder, a local animal rights activist, and the niece and nephew who stand to inherit her fortune. Well, I think you can probably see where this is going. Susie ends up dead. And it's up to the wedding planner to try to figure out what on earth happened. So, so I, uh, I think she ticked off the wrong person in that group. So we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, but I thought that was kind of a, a neat twist. And um, I don't know, like it, a lot of cat lovers out there. I mean, it, it, would you go through like the time and expense to do a wedding for your cats? I don't know. I, I wouldn't personally, but you know, if it's your thing, it's your thing. All right. So the next one, uh, one or two, I think the next two um, are not cozies. So they're more in the romance era. But uh, this one sounded so cute, I couldn't resist and love the cover. It's called In Sickness and an Elf. And so there's, it's this uh, one woman who's a wedding, wedding phobic. Um, her whole family is wedding planners. She really doesn't want anything to do with that. She is a little, you know, just scared of weddings. So, um, and then there's also uh, a paranormal who, and apparently um, it's, I think it's maybe a paranormal wedding too. I'm not positive about that. But anyway, so she is wedding phobic. Uh, and then um, there's a paranormal with no powers and his name is Devin. And somehow the bride runs away. Uh, let me read you what it says because I, I feel like I'm missing something here. Uh, so it says, Alex Bennett's life is complicated enough until she discovers their clients aren't exactly human. Paranormals exist, and when weddings are sabotaged, Alex will stop at nothing to save the business, even partnering with a sexy investigators with secrets of his own. A paranormal with no powers, Devin Cole is guilty until proven innocent. His powers have been placed in a supernatural timeout until his upcoming trial. He doesn't have time to investigate a runaway bride case, but the bride is a supermodel who also happens to be supernatural, so he has to handle damage control. His biggest concern, a tempting woman who insists on being part of the investigation. Okay, that explained it a lot better than I was. <laughs> so anyway, it does sound good. It sounds kind of quirky and cute, and, and I'd like to see where they go with that. And then uh, the next one is called The Wedding Date, and I think the series is also called The Wedding Date. Um, so this one, it's about, uh, sorry, I'm losing my page here. Um, it's about a wedding, um, a fake dating wedding. Um, so she, this woman gets stuck in an elevator and, uh, with this man named Drew, her name's Alexa, his name's Drew. And so it's his ex's wedding that he's going to. And, you know, he's okay with that, I guess, but, uh, his date that he was supposed to have for this bailed on him at the last minute. So then he gets stuck in the elevator with Alexa and convinces her to go to the wedding with him and act as his date. So they end up having, you know, a really good time. And then it's like, what do we do after that? Right? It's like, do you want to continue fake dating? Do you want to really date? You know, and it's, uh, so it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like really quirky, cute kind of, uh, you know, what is it they call them? Meet cute or something. Uh, so I like the fake dating trope. I, I find it usually kind of pretty funny. Um, I don't think, you know, it's an interesting trope and I do like it, but I mean, do people ever actually do that <laughs> in real life? I don't think so. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's cute. So I'm excited to take a look at some of those and uh, and see, you know, whether they live up to the, the hype of um, the synopsis 
and hopefully you'll find something there that um, that you're interested in, whether it's one of the romances or whether it's uh, one of the cozies, um, because they all sound like they'd be they'd be interesting. And you know, there's going to be cake, right? <laughs> it's a wedding. There has to be cake. All right. I hope you have a great day, friends. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.